socioeconomic rights and accountability projects terap and 192 consent Nigerians have filed a lawsuit asking the Federal High Court in Abuja to restrain and stop Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Bajabi Amila and all members of the House from spending an estimated 5.04 billion naira to buy 400 assorted cars from principal for principal officers and members. Sarap is also seeking a court order to restrain and stop the National Assembly Service Commission from releasing any public funds to the House of Representatives to buy 400 Toyota Camry 2020 model cars estimated to cost $35,130 each until an impact assessment of the spending on access to public services and goods like education, security, health and clean water is carried out. On 5th February, the House of Reps passed a resolution that 400 Toyota Camry 2020 cars be purchased as official vehicles for 360 members and other persons, including top management staff, chief of staff to, uh, to the two presiding offices, as well as some of their special advisors and assistants. In a statement on Sunday by Kola Wale Uluwadari, who is also Deputy Director of SERAP, the plaintiffs also maintain that it is illegal and unconstitutional for members of the House of Representatives to choose to buy expensive and exotic cars while encouraging Nigerians to tighten their belts and to patronize Nigerian brands. And stay with me in the studio is uh, Dixon Osaji to make sense of all of this matter. Really, should we be having this conversation uh, if the house of the, you know the, those who will look up to are uh, doing what they ask us not to, why are they not going for made in Nigeria? By the way, <laughs> yes. Why are they not going for made in Nigeria? Right. Yes. Uh, you see, uh, uh, Sarah are doing a very good job, and uh, uh, until we begin to see uh, politics as uh, service to the nation, we will not get it right because most of these guys are getting into power, and that is why we have a high speed of insecurity. Because most of them, what they do is that they just want to get into power, enrich themselves, enrich their families, and hey, I smell the coffee all the time, you know, and they don't care about the survival of the state. They don't care about the survival of this great nation. Now, putting in billions of naira, $35,000 to get a car, or a Jeep, or whatever the case may be, is worrisome. We have uh, made in Nigerian vehicles, and you, you, you are in the, uh, in the Senate, in the rep, you are deliberating on our behalf. We sent you guys there to go and uh, boost our economy, to go and uh, ensure we have a, stabi a social stability, to go and also ensure we have a good space of security. And uh, all of a sudden, you people kept on putting energy because what they do is that they energetically deliberate on their own self enrichment, which is criminal. Uh, because one of the reasons why security has uh, deteriorated in this country was because as at last year, uh, you saw the state in which uh, uh, Nigerians were being induced by these politicians to carry out criminal acts. Mm. You know, in uh, Kogi State, you saw a lady that was killed, uh, a woman party leader, or what it case yeah. may be, in Bayaza State, Potter Court, all over the state. And when I smelled uh, the happenings then, I knew that Nigeria is moving into a fragile state. Because it is now we're in a fragile state. You understand? Uh, at any given time, uh, anything that is considered fragile can be broken at any given time. That's right. So uh, what really went wrong is that our politicians face to understand that each time you contributed to the state of insecurity, you are crediting the account of insecurity. Because as time goes on, Nigeria will begin to have insecurity issues. So this uh, uh, development now will make the guys on the street and say, hey, these guys, want to, these guys are eating billions of naira. We send them there to go and serve us. They are enriching themselves. And the Nigerian uh, people also want to enrich themselves through uh, criminal art, hmm. terrorism, kidnapping. And that is why I see kidnapping is uh, taking a boom now because uh, these guys felt that, hey, when I see a fellow human being like me, I'm going to make uh, millions of naira. And the kidnap market is making a boom. You understand? Because, you know, at the arrest of Evans, uh, the situation was not well managed. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the spate of kidnapping then was minimal. You understand? Because uh, people like Evans, we call them high net worth kidnapping because we have various states of kidnapping. We have the uh, express kidnappers. We have the high net worth kidnappers. We have political kidnapping. You know, when you put somebody in detention yeah. uh, in a number of times that exceed uh, the uh, legal uh, uh, states, uh, that's a political kidnapping. So now what is happening in the Federal House of, of Assembly now and in the Senate now is contributing to the spirit of insecurity. You understand? Because uh, the citizens are not happy. 
and uh, we have a lot of Nigerians who are jobless. We have a lot of people who don't have help meets. We have a lot of people who are roaming around the streets because we are not even looking at uh, developing the youth. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you look uh, into statistics, uh, we have over, over 20 to 30 million unemployed youth in Nigeria. And that is what we call psychological murder. You know, when youth suffers from psychological murder, the enemy offers is a work on development. That's right. Hey, the state cannot give me what I want. The enemy comes and says, hey, and that is what the Boko Haram are using to succeed. Persuasion. You understand? Because until we begin to match... Uh, there are strategies with our own strategies. There are tactical applications with our own tactical applications. We will not get things right. So the spate of insecurity will continue to increase if our leaders continue to enrich themselves because the citizens will say, hey, you don't care about us. Mm -hmm. Then we don't care about the state because that's where social contract comes to play. In social contract, I'm going to give you light, the citizens. I'm going to give you employment. I'm going to give you security. And in turn, be a good citizen, support the development of the state, make sure Nigeria is a better place. Mm -hmm. So the social contract between the government and the citizen has been breached with these developments. Yeah. Now, having said that, um, I, I like the way Sarah put it there, you know, mentioning that this is public funds. Okay. Essentially, it means that you and I, and of course other Nigerians who pay their taxes, we're the ones who are funding all of this. Okay. And then we have Nigerians who are living in very deplorable conditions. Okay. What stops you know, uh, these leaders from channeling some of these funds? Because if we invest in made in Nigeria, maybe, just maybe, some of those funds can go into slum areas like Ajegule and all those places and, you know, uh, liberate people who are really in abject poverty. You, you see, the budget they are allocating for this, uh, uh, for the purchase of this vehicle, uh, uh, is, is, you go to some country, I think it's part of their national budget. Uh, it's, it's, that, that's, that's, that's criminal. That is, uh, that is, that is, that is uh, unpatriotic. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you see, you see why, well, that, one, one of the reasons why I love the national anthem is that there's a phrase that says, the labor of our heroes past mm -hmm. shall never be in vain. But in this 20, 21st century, our present leaders are working so hard to ensure that the labor of our heroes past are in vain. Are you with me? And that is very, very unfortunate because a lot of people put their life on the line for the survival of the state. A lot of soldiers are dying every day. Police people are dying every day. Uh, security agencies are dying every day to uphold the territorial integrity of this great nation. And that is why sometimes when we want our security agency to imbibe in what we call territorial integrity, uh, territorial behavior, uh, that is to say holding the territory, not allowing the enemy to take over the territory, mm -hmm. you need to also prove, if these funds are projected, uh, in, imagine you are serving us under air condition, well taken care of, you are in the house, you are well paid, and you are locating such kind of billions. Now what about the man that is in the front line? The soldiers that is engaging the enemy mm -hmm. not to get at you in that house because the way things are going now is that it's also going to dissipate the morale of these soldiers you know the soldiers in the front line they receive information too uh, a lot of people are, 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 are going out of the force now because as of the last time i checked i saw a lot of young soldiers leaving the force like me i joined the army when i was 19 years old are you with me i, I served pretty few years and i say hey this system is not a system i am going to uh, continue with because our current leaders and our previous leaders are ensuring and working so hard that the labor of our heroes past is going to continuously be in vain. So what I will also advise our government is that they should look at leadership uh, as a, a point of uh, taking care of the citizens, the people, not themselves. Sacrificial leadership, that's what we need in Nigeria. We need sacrificial leadership, influential leadership, you know, mm -hmm. because if you, it's, see, it's not all about you being there or sitting in, uh, in power. How are you going to influence the people? If you are a leader and your leadership is not influential, you're not a leader, you're just uh, uh, on top by privilege. Mm -hmm. So our leaders should... Uh, uh, look into population, look into development, put in most of these funds. If you come to Lagos, there, there are some areas in Lagos that are underdeveloped. Go to part of the north, the IDP camps, some uh, the, like what happened in, uh, uh, in Adama of recent. They should have carried out a damage assessment of that incident. After carrying out a damage assessment, mm -hmm. project these funds to develop those states. That is where take, hold, and rebuild. Because when the military take over the uh, uh, territory from the enemy, the police uh, hold the territory, then our national orientation agency will come and rebuild. If we don't have a strategic uh, security applications to pursue this part of insecurity, we will not get this right because we are just following this part of insecurity as it is. Mm -hmm. So our leaders must remember that a lot of people pay the price for Nigerians to survive today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. Uh